He walked out of the alley, turned, and walked in the direction of Lake Michigan. A black van, its windows reinforced with wire, stood on the curb in front of him. The initials CSS and a small logo were stenciled in white on its side. The Chicago Security Service? Two grubby youths leaning on a corner stubbed out their half-smoked cigarettes. A silent siren went off in Valentine's head. Tobacco in Chicago wouldn't be wasted by street punks. He heard footsteps behind him. For a moment, his body betrayed him. His legs turned to bags of water. When the handle on the back door of the CSS van turned, he knew the trap was being sprung. Two massive arms enveloped him. Wide load locked his hands in a deadly variation of the Heimlich maneuver, but instead of pushing up into his diaphragm, he pulled Valentine to him in a rib-squeezing embrace. A second pair of men approached from across the street. One, tall and thin, wearing a red tank top and a pair of chainmail gloves, removed a pair of familiar sunglasses as he ran toward Wide Load and his victim. You're f- <laughs> Valentine brought his booted heel down hard on his captor's instep. He thrust back his head. <laughs> and the bear hug ceased. The four men closing on him were trying to trap him between the club's flush wall and the CSS van. Its rusty back door swung open. Valentine lashed out with his foot, kicking the door closed again. It shut on something, fingers or a foot. Shit, look out! Valentine ran across the street, accidentally spilling a pair of riders on bicycles as they turned on their rubberless wheels to avoid him. The four pursuers tried to triangulate in on him, but he called on his speed and his legs answered. He cornered around a parked horse wagon so fast his feet skidded on the pavement, but he maintained his balance just. With open sidewalk ahead of him, he broke into a loping run. A few loungers on doorsteps stared as he passed. He chanced to glance over his shoulder. The four were sprinting to catch him. Thirty seconds passed, and the four became three. In another minute, the three were two. By the time Valentine turned a corner, running up a series of short, cluttered blocks, the two had become one. The tall man with the chainmail gloves. His red tank top was dark with sweat. Valentine turned down an alley and found breath in his body to do one more sprint. He zigzagged around fetid mountains of refuse, scattering rats with his passage. His pursuer just managed to start down the alley as Valentine turned the corner at the other end. To the east down this street, he saw an end to the buildings. It must be near the lakeshore and the zoo. Valentine pressed himself up against the corner and listened to his pursuer's heavy breathing and heavier footsteps as he trotted up the alley. The man slowed as he approached the alley's exit. When he knew the man was about to come around the corner, Valentine lunged. He brought his knee up and caught his pursuer in the stomach. In no mood for a fair fight, Valentine grabbed his assailant by his hair and brought his knee up again. The wolf shuddered, still keyed up. He pulled the gloves from the unconscious man and added them to his sack of weapons, then trembled again, but for a different reason. A reaper, coming and already so near. Valentine tried to clear his mind, make it as empty and transparent as a painless window. He stepped back into the shadows of the alley, moving away from the reaper. At the other end, he dug himself into a pile of trash, burrowing on his knees and elbows into the filth. He felt cockroaches crunch and crawl as he joined them at the bottom of the sodden refuse pile. The alley grew colder. Up, you! Up! The reaper seemed to be speaking in Valentine's ear. The wolf almost leaped to his feet, ready to fight and die, when he realized the voice was at the end of the alley with the duke's thug. Center. Center. I got the center. You, footling, where is the terrorist? <laughs> oh. Ah, ah, motherfucker, ah, the motherfucker jumped me. Speak clearly, will ya? Who? Oh. oh, my God! Awake now! No! Oh, oh, my God! Oh. Oh. Yes, sir! Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think he went toward, toward the lake. Uh, 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 that was where he was running, sort of. You were supposed to follow him, not take him. Uh, 
the Duke said. The Duke isn't here, or he would be taken instead of you. A motor at Valentine's end of the alley drowned out the Reaper's voice. He looked out from beneath his garbage and saw a gleaming red car stop. One of the punks who had dropped out of the foot race sat on the hood, directing it. Rats scattered again as the man jumped off and the passenger door opened. The cold spot on Valentine's mind marking the Reaper swelled and pulsed as it conducted the aura to its master vampire. All around the neighborhood, Valentine heard doors slamming and windows closing. From beneath a mass of flattened cardboard, Valentine watched the Duke, in all his gauche splendor, blanch as he looked down the alley. The Duke gulped and slunk into the alley toward the scene. His henchman trailed him for two steps, then thought better of it and returned to the car. The Duke rubbed the brass ring on his finger. Valentine wondered if he sought comfort in its touch, or perhaps imagined what having his finger pulled off would feel like. The wolf read mortal fear in the Duke's eyes before he passed. He let his ears take over, afraid to shift his position. The Reaper had senses other than that which allowed it to read auras. The good Duke. Eight years with a brass ring, courtesy of his aura-drunk lord. Dealer of powder-white chemical joy. Harborer of terrorists. How was I to know, sir? You are ready to do business first and ask questions not at all. You have tap-danced close to the edge of the law too many times. Others in the order are beginning to take notice. Like this fiasco. My instructions were not clear. I... I just thought... You're kept alive to do, not think. Well, why should that damn renegade get my money anyway, sir? He's up to no good. Throw him in the clink and be done with him. That damn renegade is something special. One of my clan sensed him coming into the train yard. We want to know who he is going to meet, what they know, and what they plan. His kind do not just wander into town to look around. He's one of that breed our foe kin use for their dirty work. Clean up this mess and return to your club. We will take over the search. He said he was going to the zoo. A cover story. Or perhaps... What shall I do with my man? Throw the corpse to the snappers. I go now to find what you have lost. I felt his aura hot and clear for a moment as he fought with your man. I can find him 